Howdy, howdy. Chris here, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Noise. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you to the channel, and hopefully you're going to get some information about how to build your skill and increase your knowledge about paint and body repair. My goal is to help you acquire the knowledge you need to do your own repairs at home. In the last episode, we repaired a dent in this Ford Fusion, and if you haven't checked out that video, check it out. I'll leave a card here or a link at the end. Today's video is all about paint and clear coat, and that's the topic that strikes the most fear in a do-it-yourselfer. But no need to fear because I'm going to share with you all the proper techniques and procedures to get a beautiful looking finish. And if you have any questions, you can always leave me a comment down below. This vehicle has previously been sanded and prepped out for paint and the blend. And if you have any questions about how to prep out your panels for paint, check out the video. I'll leave a link at the end. We're going to quickly mask off this Ford Fusion and then let's get straight into painting. We don't have a lot of room from the repair area to the bumper cover to blend this color. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have a good color match. To do that, I did a spray out card and this color is close enough to do a blend. The first step is to cover the primer only. Our goal is to keep our sprayable color as far away from the bumper cover as possible. We want a gradual transition from the new color to the old without painting right up against that bumper cover. Because I'm doing a tight blend, I want to keep my air pressure reasonably low. It's going to be around 12 PSI on the air pressure, but more importantly, I've got my volume dialed way back. So I might be like one and a half to two turns out on my volume. I'm also feathering the trigger a little bit. This helps me control the amount of paint that's going on the panel. I want to be very precise where I put this. I want to cover the primer only, and I'm not going to go well above past that edge of primer. I'm going to just get the primer covered. We want to get two or three coats covered on that primer, and then we'll start talking about how we blend it out. After your first coat of paint, you want to give it time to flash off. Usually that's about 10 minutes. So about 10 minutes in between coats. Typically you're going to need about three coats, depending on how well it covers. After it's cured and I've got my two or three coats on, you can start blending it out. Now, we have plenty of room to blend into this door. So as you can see, I'm starting to blend into the edge of the door. The first thing I'll do is go right down that edge about two inches and get that covered really well from the edge to the quarter panel. And then what I'll do is I'll do a cross pattern up and then a cross pattern down as I blend it six to eight inches out into that door. Putting three to four coats of paint over the primer areas has already started the blending process. So when I'm ready to do my blend, I'll go back over where the repair area was. And when I get to the end of that, I'll turn my wrist out towards the bumper cover. And this will give me the transition I need in the blend. You could take it one step further and reduce your paint like 15% and then spray an orientation coat on it. That'll make the paint more translucent so it won't cover as well and it'll give you a, a good transitional blend. Now I've kept my fan pattern nearly wide open on this 3M Performance gun. If you feel more comfortable narrowing your fan pattern just a tad, you feel like you have more control, then go ahead and do that. Now it's time for some clear coat and the clear coat we're using today is the Valspar V series clear. This is a Euro clear. It's a high solids clear and it mixes two to one. So we're going to use two parts clear coat and one part activator. Mix that up and get ready to spray. Before we start laying down some clear, let's talk about gun settings. Now I can give you some guidelines to how to set up your gun to start with. Now you're going to want to adjust it from there. And remember, each individual gun is going to be different. So with this 3M Performance gun is a little bit different than a conventional gun. But for a conventional gun, you're going to want to run your air pressure around 29 PSI. That's a good starting point. Now I like to have my fan pattern wide open. That gives me the biggest fan pattern I can for clear coat. Now as far as your volume, I always like to tell people to start your volume off at around two turns out, two and a half turns out. I typically spray, spray at three, but less is more in the beginning. So two and a half to three would be ideal. And then just watch how that clear lays down on the panel. A lot of where you set your volume is going to depend on how you like to spray. So if you're moving relatively quick, you're going to want more material coming out of your gun. If you're moving across the panel slower, you're going to want less. So a good place to start is about two and a half turns out in your volume and about 28 to 29 PSI in your air pressure if you're spraying at a normal medium speed. 
and just be aware that you may have to make adjustments from there. So I'm moving relatively quickly across these panels, just putting a good medium coat of clear coat. We're gonna do three coats on this. Now, typically I do two, but in this case I did three. When you're laying down your clear coat, you wanna be four to five inches away. You wanna overlap on your passes 70%. You wanna have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from that panel. That's the most important thing. If you're new to clear coating, you don't want to start or stop on the panel. You want to start off the panel and then turn your wrist onto the panel and move through your pass. Now you also don't want to stop on the door gaps. That'll create a buildup on those edges and it could create a run. And speaking of runs, I did get a run in this job. So I'm going to give you some bonus footage at the end here and show you how I remove that run and how you can do it at home. Let's lay down the final coat of clear on this paint job, and then I'll share with you the tips I use to remove a run. Listen up. If you enjoy this content, click the like button and leave me a comment down below. And if you want to check out any of the products or tools I use, check out my links in the description. And there it is, just like glass. And you can do this at home as well. I have no doubt in my mind. It's not that difficult. So if you have a project you're working at, you have questions, send me some photos at garagenoise247 at gmail.com. Now let's fix this run. So this is a little trick I use. I take a razor blade and I wrap two pieces of tape around the corners. Now the reason I do that is some of the times those edges and those corners want to dig into the paint. So you want to be careful but you want to hold it flat and this way it glides across the paint and it shaves down just the run. So I've already started shaving this down. You want to shave it down till it's pretty much flat and then we're going to go ahead and wet sand it. Now that we got this run shaved down and pretty much flat, we're going to go ahead and take a block with some 2000 grit wet dry paper on it, wet it down a little bit, and then just hold it flat and block it until it's nice and smooth. We definitely want to be careful of that body line right under that door handle. Don't sand right on that. You'll burn through it. Now we'll sand over it with some 3000 grit on this orbital sander. And then we'll switch to 5,000 to finish it up. That 5,000 almost gives it a nice little shine to it. So it doesn't take much buffing. We're going to use the rotary buffer with some 3M Perfectit compound on a white foam pad. And there you go. The run is gone. Now we can polish and deliver this vehicle. Did you like this video? I hope you did. I hope you got a lot out of it and it helps you build your skill and increase your knowledge. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and comment down below. Just give me a howdy. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise. Mm -hmm.